Okay. Yeah. All, All right. right. Thanks. Okay. Well, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, uh, this is uh, Tom Palladino here, and I have the the distinct pleasure to uh, introduce uh, Dan Decca. Today we're going to talk about um, uh, feedback, and um, we have no better, more, uh, more uh, uh, deep and experienced individual than uh, Dan Decca talking to us today about this subject. And Dan has been uh, uh, in HR for 25 years, and he's uh, worked for big companies, Wells Fargo and um, Micron and others. But over the years, uh, he's uh, had a he, he's, he took his grounding in HR and kind of focused it in the last few years on uh, leadership development and uh, executive coaching. Now, uh, those of you who might come across uh, uh, people that say they're coaches and so forth, uh, yeah, that's that's fine. I'm, I'm sure they are, but I don't think anyone will have the experience and the education that uh, Dan does here. Dan has uh, <clears throat> got his... Uh, uh, his coaching uh, credentials, uh, executive coaching credential, uh, credentials from um, Georgetown, uh, which is you know the eminent uh, place uh, for people to get uh, certified in um, in executive coaching. In the interest of time, I'm going to have Dan go ahead and proceed. This is a uh, a, a uh, taped, obviously, webinar. Uh, and he, Dan's going to go through some slides, but we'll also have some exchange, uh, him and I, uh, as I have questions and requests uh, clarity. Okay. Dan, thank you very, very much for uh, doing this for us. And um, um, please uh, tell us a little bit more about yourself and let's uh, get going. Great. Well, thank you so much. Uh, it's an absolute pleasure to be here with you. Pleasure to be here with you, Tom. Uh, I appreciate the opportunity and to share some thoughts about feedback. And so to just review a little bit around our purpose and desired outcomes for this time together. So our purpose is to reduce any stress um, that you have and increase your effectiveness around feedback, whether you're receiving or sharing feedback. Because Tom said he's been working on, um, on increasing that capability at the organization, at the university. And so we're gonna talk about some things that I found to, to help. And so desired outcomes, I'm gonna share some ideas, some best practices and some tools that you can use today. Um, it's, uh, it's one thing to talk about things, but I'm like, I'd like to talk about them in a way where after this webinar, after 15 or 20 minutes, you could get off and you could go practice this with someone either receiving or sharing feedback. And desired outcomes is we increase your confidence and capability to effectively receive and share feedback. Uh, a lot of things move by how confident and capable we feel. And so we want to share a few things that'll help you with that. And then our agenda, I'm going to start with some thoughts around feedback, just kind of a starting point. Like, what is it? Why is it challenging? Tom asked me some common questions around feedback. So we'll kind of move from those. And then I'll share some best practices, one specific tool to share feedback. And then uh, we'll have some questions and a close. How does that sound, Tom? Sounds good, Dan. Thank you. Go ahead. Sure. So before I jump in, I just really quickly, my life on a slide so you know um, who I am and, and uh, who you're getting feedback from, so you got a little bit of context. So my dad was in the military and um, I was born in Michigan. We moved around a bunch. My parents got divorced. He got stationed in Hawaii, so I grew up in Hawaii and I'm a surfer. I ran track, cross country and marathons growing up, was in a bunch of bands. I attended Loyola Marymount University in LA and studied film and business, then got my MBA from San Diego State. And then like Tom said, I got my executive coaching certification from Georgetown. I met her, that's my wife, Kip, and we created this family. And as far as careers, I started out at Packard Bell in a call center doing employee relations, worked at a software development firm, worked at Wells Fargo, which is where I met Tom. And he had a huge impact on my career and taught me what a real business partner does and how to speak the language of the business. I worked at Capital One as an HR business partner, supporting the office of the CIO, doing employee relations. That's when I got trained as an executive coach. I worked at Micron, did a bunch of leadership development and OD work, um, worked at Real Networks um, as a, a HR director for video games business, then back to Micron, 
worked for my church doing leadership development in 100 countries, started my own executive coaching practice, and then worked for a consulting firm called DecisionWise, doing engagement 360s and coaching work. And now I'm just full-time flying squirrel doing executive coaching and leadership development with my own company. Uh, my passions, anything with my wife and mountain biking, books, I'm reading the classics. I just finished War and Peace and really enjoying Doom. Um, music, I've been um, listening to this pianist, um, Hani Arani. I, I think that's how you say her name, amazing. And uh, life learnings, and you'll see some of this. I think everything's created spiritually before it's created physically. Like even this idea about how to have a webinar and to even have a discussion started with Tom in his mind and he had an idea and then he talked with me and now it's happening. And then it took me about 10 to 15 years to believe this, but I think it's better to be trusted than loved. So that's a little bit about me, just so you know um, who's speaking to you and we'll keep going. So from a starting point, let's just start with feedback. Feedback is a highly energetic topic. There is a lot around it, a lot of potential energy. And as an example of this, I'd just ask you right now, what goes through your mind when your boss leaves you a message or says to you, can I see you in my office? And I mean, if you think right now, like how you feel and what goes through, for me, it's kind of a, a pit in my stomach. And uh, the first thing I think of is not, oh, he's gonna give me a bonus or tell me how well I'm doing, but uh, what did I do wrong? So, I mean, that's just an example of somebody saying, hey, can I give you some feedback or can I see you in my office? And it's so energetic. There's so much potential there that around a lot of energy, we tend to go negative and start to protect ourselves before we even know what's going on. So I think that's a starting point for, for feedback. And I think the tension of feedback comes from the unknown. I don't know what my boss is going to say. If you say to me, hey, I want to share some feedback with you. I don't know what you're going to say. And that unknown makes, makes me very nervous. I don't know how this, all this energy coming to me is gonna benefit me or hurt me. And a lot of times when we think about life, like things that are highly energetic that I don't know about, I'm cautious. And so that's where the tension comes from and feedback of, I don't know what's gonna happen. And so for my thoughts on feedback, I believe that highly energetic interactions, any of them, sharing feedback as one requires some grounding some focus and some direction, not to diffuse, you know, and like take out that fuse and take out that energy, but to direct it and align it with a purpose. You know, it's just like unaligned energy is really hard to understand, but when it's got a focus, it's got a direction and a purpose, I can work with it. And so Tom also asked me, he's like, how do I see, how have I seen feedback change over time? And just in my short career, I think there's an openness and an increase in feedback. And I think one of the primary functions is our ability through technology to gather so much information. You know, you and I can do online surveys. We can create one for ourselves. Um, we're always doing um, feedback sessions like after a meeting, how was the class? Um, we're asking you buy something and you get this customer survey. So technology has enabled us to ask a lot more questions around customers and employees. And so I think that's changed feedback. And then I think another thing that's changed feedback is just in behavioral sciences. I think what we've learned is there's an increase of the understanding of emotions, the energy they have, the, and, and the idea that energy that's not released or shared doesn't disappear, but it remains. And in my mind, it radiates. And so if you've got some feedback and you don't share it with someone, um, either that person or someone else or process it in some way, just to release it right in your journal, that feedback and that energy doesn't dissipate. It doesn't go anywhere. It stays there within you. And, and I think one way this shows up is if you've got some feedback for someone and you don't share it, you think you're not sharing it. But I would say from my experience, people can feel it. People can see like, hey, they're, they've got something they want to share with me, good or bad, they can feel it. And so I think those two things kind of progress in cognitive behavioral theory and technology has really increased and, and created this propensity to share more feedback. And then I think feedback in general, with all this energy, it can be both a releasing and a fueling and accelerating function. 
So Tom, any thoughts or reactions to that? It's just a, just really, I never thought about it. And it's so true. Uh, and so, you know, it's not like not doing, not giving feedback has a neutral effect. It will have an effect one way or another. Um, so um, it's, that's a key point. Thanks, Dan. You're welcome. Yeah, and that's a really interesting way of thinking about it. It's just like, is there middle ground, you know, this kind of neutral ground? And, and I'm like, I, 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 don't, I don't know. I, I actually, I don't think so. I think mm -hmm. we make choices and not sharing feedback is a decision right. and, uh, and has an impact. So it's a great way to think about it. So then some other thoughts, just some common questions, um, you know, that we're going to cover is why is feedback sharing and receiving so challenging? How can I get better at sharing feedback? Everybody wants to know that. And then I'm always like, well, you kind of, before you share, you got to be willing to receive. And so we're probably going to start there. And then are there any best practices that I could try out today? And I've got some thoughts for you. And then any other advice to reduce my stress and increase my capability we'll talk about. So why is feedback so challenging? Uh, we talked a little bit um, about that. You know, it's, it's so energetic and, and it needs grounding. It needs focus. It needs a direction or a purpose. And so how does this practically apply to you're like, well, that's kind of some theory and about energy, but how does it apply to me and, and sharing feedback right now? And I'd recommend this. I'd recommend that you do not share your feedback with anyone until you can answer this question in the affirmative and in detail. So it's this question. Do you know what's most important to the person that you wanna share feedback with? Do you know what they wanna accomplish in the next six to 12 months? And I would say, if you can't answer that question in the affirmative, then you're not ready, qualified, or prepared to share feedback with that person. And the reason being is if you can't answer that question, then you're not gonna be able to link that feedback. You're not gonna be able to ground or focus or direct that energy to the thing that's most important to them. And so if you can answer that feedback you know, for yourself, then you're more likely to link feedback received to that goal too. So both, so both things. You know, from sharing feedback with someone, I don't think you could share it, should share it unless you know that, because then you'll know what their purpose is. And then for yourself, if you're receiving feedback, because everybody's like, how do I get better at receiving it? You should know that for yourself and be able to answer that question, because that allows you to accept, receive, direct, and use that feedback for your purpose. I think a lot of times what it breaks down in the feedback is a lot of times people are sharing feedback for themselves. And my suggestion is you should be sharing feedback for the benefit of that other person. So, um, and, and I think another reason I think why this works is if you don't have an answer or goal for yourself, I'm like, where am I going? What do I wanna do? And if you don't know that for the person that you're sharing with, then you're most likely gonna put up some walls, be defensive to all this energy. But if it has a purpose, you're much more likely to accept it. And it's much more likely to be well received. I tell you, Dan, it, it tips things on its head because the thing is, um, typically in the past, you have this, uh, this feedback is tied into some kind of performance management and associated with that as a cascading approach of goals. Mm -hmm. and consequently, the, a lot of these uh, feedback sessions are the boss uh, sitting with the employee saying, here are the company or my goals. And um, I need you to get on board and um, here's some feedback I need to give you so you can get our goals done. Mm. Um, and, and so uh, I, I can see where that would, uh, well, you know, why, why don't you speak to that and, and what, what, what the effects of that are? Sure. I mean, from my own personal experience, um, earlier in my career, I, I thought my goal was to be right. And um, I would share, share feedback and share ideas because I'm like, it's right. And I didn't think very much about how it was going to be received and the other person's goals. So I think the reason, and, and some of that worked, but most of it didn't. And I was right, but I wasn't effective. I wasn't helping. And, um, and there's a distinction between those. So I think that's probably why a lot of this comes out is just from my own personal experience. I'm like, wow, you know, feedback isn't just something 
you know, that, that you do, it's, it's something that needs to have a goal and be complete. Like the, the purpose of feedback is not to share it. The purpose of feedback is to help someone learn, grow and achieve their goals. And so that mindset is really different. And I, I still think Tom, you know, there's a, you know, a cascading, you know, kind of goal thing happens and it's good to align, but I would say like, where does the alignment happen and start? I would say it starts with the individual. What mm -hmm. do you want to achieve? And then how do we figure out how, what the business or the school or this class wants to achieve? And let's find the place where those intersect wow. because that's where engagement is going to happen. That's really, that's pretty, pretty, pretty profound. And, but it makes a lot of sense. And the reason, I mean, we know that this approach that they've used over the years has been a disaster. I mean, Gallup uh, some years ago said that these so-called, um, uh, feedback sessions, uh, they asked people before and after the session, and uh, was it 65% of the people after the session felt less motivated mm -hmm. and, and, uh, and, and less willing to, you know, to, to help the company. And I think part of the reason is because their agenda was, you know, um, totally hijacked, I guess, maybe, huh? Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and it's interesting. Yeah, hijacked and the energy from the person giving the feedback was greater than the energy of the person trying to use the <laughs> feedback and, the, sure. and that goal got lost or smothered. And um, yeah, and I think, I think that can happen very simply. It's, it's motivated by some good intention. You know, I'm fulfilling mm -hmm. my responsibility sure. of sharing feedback, sure. Sure. but I think it can be overused sure. and, and it can be, and can be lost. Yeah. Yeah. Good point. So, you know, there's there in the questions I usually get is, is just like, how can I share feedback? Um, but you can see we kind of changed the order here of like, well, how do I get better at receiving feedback? And I just want to kind of go through some kind of activities here. Just answer this question. This is it. It's how do you answer this question? Learning is, and what comes to your mind? Tom, what's the first thing that came in your mind? Uh, probably growing or developing. Great, great. And for everyone else, just paying attention to how you answered that question. Learning is what? Is it fun? Is it exciting? Is it exhausting? Is it challenging? I would suggest that that answer to your question of how you feel about learning um, would bear a strong resemblance to how you feel about feedback. Um, they're very closely related because mm -hmm. we get feedback so we can learn, grow, and improve. Yeah. So I'd ask you to just spend a little time in that and see how that's aligned for you. And that will help you to receive feedback. And then there's an, another thought, we've heard it often and, and from many different places that it's, it's difficult to love others if we don't love ourselves. And I would say similarly, it's difficult to receive feedback um, if we don't know where we wanna go or be. And so I already talked about this a little bit, but I'd encourage you, if you wanna get better at receiving feedback, and it seems maybe a little bit unrelated in the beginning, but if you wanna get better at sharing feedback, and get better, you need to get better at receiving feedback. And you should really know and be able to answer, what do you want to achieve in the next six to 12 months? You need to know that answer because that answer will then direct, help direct the feedback that you receive from others. Because right now you are receiving endless feedback. You are receiving, like right now I'm getting feedback because I'm watching Tom's you know, image on here and, and I'm, I'm receiving feedback in my head for myself. How's this going? And, and I'm, I think ahead sometimes of like, how would this be received? Feedback is happening constantly from family members, um, people that you work with, employees, students. But the point is, is are you receptive to it? And if you have a place to take and move that energy, like I want to achieve this. Now, how can this feedback help me? It's going to move. It, you're going to be way more open to it. You're going to be way more receptive to it. And it's going to have an opportunity to fuel and drive what you want to move. So with this answer, you'll be able to ground, focus, and direct any energy directed at you, even stuff that you don't agree with. Because some feedback will agree with you. are like, ah, I can see why people would say that. Like, I don't totally agree with it, or that's not what I hope for, but I can see why they would say that. Or even you're like, I disagree with that, but I can see how they could say that. And I, I can see how this could be useful for me. So that's probably kind of that first step is just getting clear on that, the relationship between learning, the relationship between receiving feedback 
And do you have a place for this feedback to go? Any uh, thoughts on that, Tom? It's very good, Dan. I no, it's all okay. I got. Yeah. So then, then we go. Well, how can I get better at sharing feedback? And so, my thought around around sharing feedback and a lot of things is like you need to do your homework. You need to pay the price for the responsibility and privilege to share the feedback. Mm -hmm. And you know, you can probably already think about like well, what's that homework he's talking about? And it's like, do you know what their goals are? Do you know what's important to them? And by the way, I think you, you, you can, if you have a small child in your life, like you, you can know what's important to them. If, if you've got an addict in your life, you know what's important to them. If you're kind of confused right now, you know what's important to you. It's like, I got to solve this problem. So sometimes people are concerned, like, I don't know like what that is for someone. I'm like, just ask and listen. And it may be what's important to them today is I just want to get enough desire to go to work today, or I want to be able to read this book or something. I mean, it could be so simple, but I think if you ask people, they'll tell you. And so uh, to share a little bit more light on this, yesterday I ate lunch and then I, I was standing next to the skate park and I, and I watched some skaters and I grew up as a skater and I love skating, but I'm getting a little bit too old for it. But I was just watching them and I, and I was just, I watched these one guys keep working on this one move. They kept doing this tail slide and, uh, and they were trying to do this tail slide into this like kick flip. So I was just watching for like 20 minutes and I was just like, what do I learn from them? And you know what, this is some practice, repeat, keep going. Um, I watched a talk once or a comedy special on Jerry Seinfeld's like, I never worry about skaters. They're the most, uh, they're the most persistent people. They, they slam, they get up and they do it again and they do it again. And I'm not saying that you need to slam in your feedback sessions, but you know what? The way you get better at something is doing it again and again and again. And, and, but each time you do it, you do it with the new information that you learned from the last time. And, and something else actually that I learned from these guys is there's a way to fall hard and there's a way to fall soft and lightly. And I watch them and they fall really lightly. Mm -hmm. And an example of that would be, you know, if you walk into a meeting and you pretend like you know everything and you don't know everything, you're going to fall really hard. Mm -hmm. If you walk into a meeting with the openness of like, hey, there's some things I know, but I can't wait to learn from you students or from you, my peers. And I've got some questions. Mm -hmm. If you don't know something, you're going to fall lightly. Mm -hmm. You're not going to have this catastrophic fall. And so that's something to keep in mind is how do I how do I fall lightly? And in a feedback session, you know, it's just like, well, you're going to fall. You could potentially fall pretty hard if you don't know what's important to the person you're speaking to. Mm -hmm. But if yeah. you know what's speaking to them, what's important to them and you're speaking to them, huh. you have the potential to fall lightly. So sure. I learned that. And then another thing I learned is you got to envision the whole move, um, not just the start, like, oh, I'm going to start this move, like, oh, I'm going to get feedback. But you need to think about the middle and you need to think about finishing the move that the feedback move is not just, I'm going to share it with them. And then whatever happens, happens. The whole move is I'm going to prepare myself. I'm going to share the feedback. I'm going to listen to how it's received. I'm going to align it to what I believe their goals are, and I'm going to respond to them. And so just like you can't chuck up a trick without knowing how you're going to land, you can't do feedback without the vision that I want to help this person. So Tom, before I move into this model, any reactions to any of that, Tom, or thoughts on that? I, I, I would ruin it if I tried to say <laughs> anything more about it. It's just a really enlightening. Thanks, Dan. You bet. So, so to get really practical, there's a model that I learned from um, another one of my, uh, my mentors, this guy named Doug Crawford. He's, a, he's just a, a wonderful man and taught me so much. And um, he taught me um, a model for sharing feedback and it's called the conversation wheel. So it's in the, I, the section of a wheel, a design of a wheel. And let me just put through the parts and then we'll explain what happens. It starts with for the sake of what, then we talk about this is what I see, what I feel, what I think, and then my request or my offer. And uh, let me explain these pieces that go into this. And also if you have some feedback that you would like to share, like, put that in your mind. Like if you think of like, gosh, I need to have a conversation with someone mm. um, and I wanna share some feedback, just put that in your mind and, and we'll walk through this and, and kind of practice this. 
So the best place to start is for the sake of what? Like, why am I having this conversation? And a lot of times people will answer that. And I'd, I'd ask you right now in your mind, like, why do you want to have this conversation? And you're probably going to say, well, it's to share the feedback. And I'm like, go deeper. Why do you want to share the feedback? And, and you may say, well, it's my responsibility, or they're not doing their job, or they're not getting the grades I want them to get. And I'm like, okay, go deeper. Like, why is that important? And get to the place where you're like, why do you really want to have this conversation? And, and I would say you're starting to get there when you're like, I want to help them. Mm. I want to help them succeed. Mm. I want them to be successful. I want to help them achieve their goals. And if you tell me, you're like, look, Dan, I know that this person wants to graduate at this point. And, and right now they're not on that path. And that's what I want to do is I want to help them graduate. Mm. Then start with that and tell them. Because when you say, hey, I want to share some feedback with you. Mm all the walls go up, all those defenses go up. And then if you go, and by the way, the reason that we're having this conversation is I know that graduating is super important to you and I wanna help you do that. Or I know that completing this project is very important to you and you've been working on it for the last couple of months. And I've seen some things that I think might, might help. Is that okay? And then pause and see what they say. Like most likely their eyes are gonna be kind of surprised because they're gonna be like, oh my gosh, you mean I'm not in trouble? And they're like, no, I, I actually am sharing this for the sake of helping you. Then what I encourage you to do, and this takes some preparation, is to describe only what you can physically see with your eyes. You do not describe what you think, why the person is doing the things that they're doing. We tend to move directly to that. But I would say, share what you see. So if the person hasn't completed their homework, just say, you haven't completed your homework. And the more specific you can be, the better. You haven't con completed your homework or turned in an assignment in the last two weeks. And that's it. Just share what you see and that concerns you. One of the reasons that you do that is if you both see the same thing and you want to check that you do, we're not talking about what you're thinking. It's just, it's just the facts. This is what I see. Or you had this and it wasn't turned in. Or you know, in this meeting, this happened and just go, this is what I see. And then you ask them, any thoughts about that? And if you've shared what you see, most likely they're going to be like, yeah, I, I, I can see the same thing. Then I encourage you to move to what I feel. And when I'm talking about what I feel, I just mean one word, one word emotion and just share one word with them. And if you like me, if I ask you, what are you feeling? And you're like, well, there's really only like three emotions, happy, sad, mad. <laughs> I'd encourage you to go to Google, type in um, a list of emotions and find one that works for you. There are a lot more emotions than happy, mad, and sad. <laughs> there's uh, regretful, there's nervous, there's anxious, um, there's elated, there's so many. And so I'd, I'd encourage you to look at that and start to pay attention. And I used to just carry that list around with me because I thought there were only three emotions. But get clear on what one word emotion are you feeling about this feedback in this conversation? You've told them for the sake of what, you've told them what you see, and then you say, and this is how it makes me feel, one word emotion. And then the reason that you do this is because a lot of times we're talking about the energy around feedback. There's a lot of emotions around it. So you wanna to connect to some of that emotion and then you wanna share that emotion because I can pretty much guarantee you the next question they will ask you. If you say, I am feeling anxious, what do you think they're gonna ask you? Most likely they're gonna ask you why. Why? Or why do you feel nervous about this? Or why do you feel unsettled about this? They're gonna ask you why. And that gives you permission to share, this is what I think. You've earned the right to share what you think. And just by being a manager, just by being a friend, you have not earned the right to share what you think. You need to make sure that you're connected to the person. You share feedback in a way that it can be received, just the facts. You highlight and open some vulnerability and say, this is how I'm feeling about it. Now you've earned the right to do that. Mm -hmm. And then you can share what you think. You're like, this is what I think. This is why... I I think you haven't turned in your homework. Um, this is why you haven't completed this obligation. And then you move to this place after you've shared this feedback to show an increase of love and concern and show that 
You're not just chucking this move up. You're going to be there and complete this move is here's my request. I'm happy to talk with you about this further. I'm happy to have any conversations you want to have in the next week, whatever you need. And also, and here's my, my offer, my request. Well, my offer is I'm happy to meet with you and my request, like, I would like you to do this or do that. And it's combined with your offer to so your offer and request. And, and so that's a model for, for sharing feedback or for having a difficult conversation that I found super useful. Also, um, if you got to write a difficult email, this is a great format to use. And just to prepare yourself before you send that email, like write this out, like, why am I sending this email? And what are the facts around it? What do I see? What am I feeling? What do I think about it? And what is my request or offer? It's a fantastic format to support the people around you, share feedback and navigate some of those challenging conversations. Tom, any reactions to this? It, it, it's like I said to you earlier before we started this, is, uh, this is a, a completely different approach and that's what we need in this, in this particular, um, on this particular subject because uh, uh, what we've been taught in the past in terms of, you know, we start off right in the very beginning by talking about what they did wrong over the past year. Seems like in that scenario, you, you did everything you could just to make things worse at that very point. And so mm -hmm. seems to me that the, the wheel thing, it gets you to that point where the person who's gonna get the feedback, as you said, at that point, there's, a, there's, a, there's an approach there where um, the person who's getting the feedback realizes that your intentions are, 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 you know, uh, really, really pretty much focused on that individual. And that's a big change. Um, mm -hmm. What, uh, how have your clients um, reacted to this kind of approach? What, what has been your, um, you know, how, what, what, what has been your experience uh, with this approach? Yeah, I am. Um, first, often when people have conflict or they're having a difficult time sharing feedback, I'll ask them like, do you have a model? Do you have a plan? And I, I kind of start with there. And, and what I find is the people that don't have a problem with conflict have some type of model because they just have something. And it's not like it's, they use it exactly, but it's, you know, for a difficult conversation, they have a plan, a map, and something that they can refer to. Because if, again, if we go back to feedback, it's all this energy. This is a way to contain direct and focus that energy. And so, that's what often happens. I, what I find is people that don't have a problem sharing feedback have some model um, mm -hmm. and people that, that have challenges with it don't have a model. So I introduce it and um, you know, it's, it's relatively simple. It does definitely shift things because mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's very compassionate. It's very, mm -hmm. whoa, this is a two-way deal. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of us like myself, I haven't learned that conflict is a two-way deal. Mm -hmm. It's more just like, I'm gonna tell you what I think and that's it. And, that's, and boy, especially with our world right now, um, you know, I mean, with an election year and everything going on, you know, it, it's so much of just like, this is what I believe, this is what the way it is and nothing else matters. And so I think this is also very timely for just working with people and finding solutions. So, but I think uh, after they get that model, you know, I encourage them to just practice it. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of times with my clients will role play um, because one of the biggest challenges, Tom, is they'll start out with for the sake of what, and they'll be like, well, you know, this is a, you know, I want to talk with you because I want to help you achieve your goals. And, um, you know, this is what I see. Um, you haven't done this because um, you don't think that this is important enough. And I have to just push the time out and I go, hey, wait, that because you jump to what I think. Sure. And, and that's probably the hardest part is just mm -hmm. getting clear because we're, we're so used to moving into that and just sure. making that space is probably the biggest challenge that people sure. have. Sure. Really great, Dan. Fantastic. Great. Really good. So honestly, like that, that's all that we had like formally. And so yeah. Tom, just any other follow-up questions that come to no, mind? No, to the extent that this will stand alone when we, uh, when we publish this, it probably is good right now. And if they have questions, they could, uh, they could email me and I can get you involved if, if that's okay with you, Dan. I really appreciate it. We, I've learned so much from this and I think everyone else will too. And it's, it's really, it's groundbreaking and it's, uh, it's very exciting. 
Well, thank you. Thank you. It's an opera. It's a privilege to spend any time with you. And for everybody else, it's a, it's an honor to talk about these things. And I appreciate your efforts and even just watching this to try to improve on sharing feedback and, and helping those around you. And if you got any questions, reach out to Tom. If you got any other questions, reach out to me, Dan at flyingsquirrel.coach. And uh, thank you. Thanks so much for your time thank and you. efforts. Thank you so much, Dan. You're welcome.